Welcome back, players. I'm Jack with 36 Cancel, and this is Coco the Wise Cat. So there are a lot of new exciting releases coming up for English. Alice's Asian dropped recently, JoJo's Golden Wind is about to release, and come June, I'll be totally absorbed in slime. But between now and then, there's a smaller set I'd like to talk a little bit more about. Fujimi Fantasia Bunko. So let me just cut in for a moment. This is me two months after starting this video. I was making this set preview before COVID-19 was even on the radar. Obviously, I had my own stuff to deal with when the virus dropped, and my channel work got delayed for a bit. And now that everything has gone to shit, the set's going to be delayed with no release date as of yet. But of course, we'll still get it eventually. I hope. So I'm going to release the rest of the video as is for when that time comes. But as for now, I'm hoping everyone is safe, indoors, and most of all, healthy. Play some Wash 4s over the internet until COVID-19 is just an old meme. Don't know how? Check the link in the description. But anyway, back to the video. So right off the bat, a lot of English-only players won't recognize this title. It's because this set is pretty different from other English Weiss sets. So what's Fantasia Bunko anyway? Well, let me explain. And before I do, just let me put this caveat out there that we don't have the official translation from Bushi on these cards yet. So the card names and the wording on the abilities may change slightly from this video. Anyway, Fujimi Fantasia Bunko, rather than a show, game, or novel, is actually a publishing arm of Katakawa. If Katakawa is Disney, then Fujimi is like Marvel Studios, with Fujimi Fantasia Bunko being Marvel Comics. And like Marvel Comics, despite being owned by a much larger entity, they maintain their own unique lineup of titles that appeal to edgy teenagers, so shonen shit, and they have ownership of a boatload of popular stuff. In their library are popular giants like Day Day Live and Full Metal Panic, romantic comedies like Emo Emo and Amagami Brilliant Park, and true treasures like Kori Wa Zombie Desuka and High School DxD, among many other impressive titles. What all of those titles have in common is that all of them will be featured in Fantasia Bunko's Weiss Schwarz release. You see, for those of you like me who don't really understand the concept, think of Fantasia Bunko like a label that, under their own umbrella, owns many titles and has a network of their own favorite illustrators, writers, editors, and creative minds, and has their own unique identity. Even though many Japanese publishers are owned by the giant umbrella of Katakawa, it's not that different from Marvel being owned by Disney or DC being owned by Warner Brothers. And the purpose of those companies in the US is largely the same as it is in Japan, to maintain an independent identity, staff, and audience for their titles. And just like those companies, they'll work mostly independently of their parent and sister companies to negotiate rights and licensing of their creative material. In Japan, it's common to license several franchises out at once for the purpose of showcasing their library and other media, like collaborations with artists and on mobile games. And this Y4 set is the same thing. When it was released in Japan, it was meant to be a set showcasing Fantasia Bunko's library, or at least some popular elements of it. Katakawa Sneaker Bunko, a sister company also owned by Katakawa, also has its own Y4 set. But it's like, straight up porn, so without major changes, it's unlikely that we'll see it in English. So let's focus on Fantasia. So obviously, this different format raises a few questions. Questions, so let's run through the basics. First off, since the set showcases multiple titles, it obviously has to work differently than other sets for its card pool. In Fantasia Bunko and sets like it, instead of an entire card pool dedicated to one show or game, the set is divided into small segments with groups of anywhere from 10 to 20 cards for each featured series. Some other titles make a smaller appearance with only 1 to 7 cards, and each title is pretty much locked into one color. So what does Fantasia Bunko feature? Well, starting in green, we have several cards from Amagami Brilliant Park and Full Metal Panic and Maburaho. In red, the sets featured are High School DxD and Saikoto no Ichizan. For blue, Day Day Live, Emo Emo, and Akashic Records of a Bastard Magic Instructor take the lion's share of cards. And in yellow, our major picks are Kore Wazambi Desuka and the ambition of Oda Nobuna. There are also some cameo cards from Okasan Online, The Legend of the Legendary Heroes, Tokyo Ravens, Sky Wizard Academy, Chika, Slayers, and Our Last Crusade. While you could probably make a deck dedicated to each of the major titles featured, because of the tiny card pool, it definitely wouldn't be as strong as just mixing the cards together with tech from other titles in Fantasia Bunko. And speaking of playing cards together, these sets are the only wise expansions where you can combine cards from different titles. Every card in Fujimi Fantasia Bunko begins with an F in its serial number, and all of them are legal to build a deck with together. Now the special thing about many of these cards is that they'd also be legal to play in their own respective expansions. For example, in Katakawa Sneaker Bunko, there are cards from Konosuba. If Sneaker Bunko was in English, we could play these cards with the original Konosuba expansions. If High School DxD ever gets its own Weiss set, all the DxD cards in Fantasia Bunko would be legal to combine with it. That's why many of the characters in Fujimi Fantasia Bunko have three traits. Like most other Weiss characters, characters in Fantasia Bunko have two traits related to their respective series so they can interact with their own titles, but each character in Bunko also has the Fantasia Bunko trait so that all of them can work together. There are a lot of abilities on your average Weiss card that refer to traits, like Brainstormers and SAO searching Avatar net characters, or Kamina from Gurren Lagann searching Team Die Gurren characters. 
Well, just about every ability like that in Fantasia Bunko is keyworded to a trait from the source material and the Fantasia Bunko trait. The cards are meant to work together and be put in the same deck as one another, so if you've ever felt like having a crossover deck, this is a great way to do it. If you're into multiple titles from the Fantasia Bunko collection, this Y4's expansion is a great way to show your love for more than just one. With just one box, you'll see cards from all different Bunko titles. Now the real question is, can we build our deck with just our favorite show? Well, probably, but it won't be nearly as competitive if you don't mix the match tools from different titles. For example, High School DXD only has 5 level zeros. Now, while that's enough to comfortably make a deck, some of them are far from the best that Fantasia Bunko has to offer. Full Metal Panic also has some great tech, but its only climax combo is on a finisher. Most Bunko decks will take the best of what each title has to offer in its small card pool and combine them to make their own decks. So why don't we take a look at some of what we can build around in Bunko. First on my list are some of the choice cards from Red in High School DXD. The cameo for this show features a Rios level 3 that free plays a character from your hand equal to your level and gives it plus 1 soul until the end of the turn for free. It also has an Asha that combines with the standby climax to give all your characters plus 1500 power on top of her global 1500 boost, who also happens to be a healer, and an amazing looking top check burn Rios that's also anti-encore. It also has a level 1 cigarette style event that mills 2 to salvage a level X character where X is the total level milled, which can be salvaged when you pay 1 and play a climax with another Rios level 0. The Trial deck also features Rios, which has a pay one on attack to choose itself and another character for reverse salvaging ability. All in all, it's not a bad package at all. It's definitely possible to build a deck dedicated to DXT in all of its glory. It's definitely got some finishing power, a usable combo, and great standby targets. Because in this set, standby is big, but we'll see that later. For now, we'll move on to another giant in Bunko, Blue featuring Day Day Live. Here are some of the big hits. There's a level 3 Kurumi that you can pay an extra 1 when you play her to fetch another copy of herself from your library and just put on the stage. And she has a climax combo that I imagine is in flavor with her character since I never watched Day Day Live. On attack, if your clock has 2 or less cards in it, you can choose 1 card in your waiting room and shuffle it back into your deck. And if you have 3 or more cards in your clock, your opponent puts the bottom 4 cards of their deck into their waiting room and you deal X where X is climaxes. Kind of a sick backwards brainstorm. It's a really cool card, without a doubt, and you can pair it with Day Day Live's other level 3, which is a non-climax bound pay 5 restander. The title also features a free running level 0, and an ambush union style top checker that you pay 1 and rest 2 to check 3 cards instead. I've heard it said that this is probably what ambush union should have been in the first place. It also has a level 1 climax combo, but the character is pretty low power and it just gives itself bounce on attack. Not too amazing. So unfortunately, a mono Day Day Live deck is still very possible, but not nearly as viable. The Free Runner and the Top Checker, of course, are great tech inclusions, and the level 3 is a very splashable finisher to pair with it. Because keep in mind, all these cards have the Fantasia Bunko trait and are best used together. So next up, Koi Wazambi Desuka has a major appearance in yellow, thank god, and it has a lot to offer. First up, Haruna comes in as a hard-hitting finisher. With Daily Nonsense, which is a win trigger, you can pay 3 when she attacks and deal 4 damage, and she's also a discard stock healer. That's a really damn strong profile, if I do say so myself. She helps pay for her own ability, heals you, and deals some serious damage. Not much else to say other than that's some good shit. Haruna also appears on one of the set signature events, Impenetrable Moment. It's a 3-4 counter event that gives any two of your opponent's characters minus 2 soul. Since a lot of Fantasia Bungo decks aren't too heavy on their top end, especially the standby builds, this is a very popular addition. And of course, stuff like stock healing and stock plusing level 1 combos help a lot with that. Like this one, featuring best ninja, Sarah. She's a base 5k with a shot combo to perform the bunny girl union effect, so she's 1k smaller, but still, it's a pretty good combo. And finally, Zombie offers some pretty good level zeros, including this Yu that Akoski's for a yellow climax, and a 4k Haruna that gives all your opponents encore for 2 stock, which is basically no drawback at all. Oh, and there's a 2-2 6500 Tominori that gets plus 2500 for each back row character, and she's an extremely popular and very powerful standby target. So for Zombie again, it's very possible to make a deck with just KZ cards. It's probably got one of the strongest finishers and the best level 1 combos in the set, and I love that. If I do start looking at making a Bungo deck, personally just for the love of the show, this would be where I start. But moving on, let's talk about the green in Bungo. Now something we should mention here is that color distribution is not balanced. Red and yellow are only divided into two titles each. And while blue has three big features, it's also the bigger part of the color wheel. Green is divided into three titles as well, each with smaller card pools, and nothing in the trial deck. So that being said, now that I've done a title for blue, yellow, and red, I'll just get some of the green stuff out of the way since none of it really features nearly enough cards to create a deck from just one show. 
Starting with Amagami Brilliant Park, the title mainly features a 2 or less climax early play level 3 that can top check a character to get clock kick until end of turn, and the set's 102k backup. There's also a level 2 climax combo and one of those 1-0s that has like 5 abilities but none of them are very good. Full Metal Panic also makes an appearance, mainly with a level 3 compression killing finisher that's also a healer. When you play the climax, if she's in your front row and you have 4 more other characters, you get to chop tech 3 of your opponent's deck, or move up to 3 to the waiting room, and then have your opponent shuffle their deck. If you have 3 of her out, you get to dig 9 deep without even attacking, which is pretty nutso. I can see combining her in the level 3 early play from Amangami to some pretty mean ends. Full Metal also has an Arc Gurren style level 2 that has to get a single target level 0 marker, which unfortunately isn't an amazing card. But if you do get the marker, ARX Leviathan is a 2-1-10k, during whose battle you just don't take damage from your opponent's auto effects. You know, if this was in any other set, and even in any other color in this one, this card would probably be an insane level 2. But sometimes we can't have everything we want. And finally in green, we have Maburaho, bringing to the table a 1-0 climax combo that on reverse gives you 2 free stock from the top of your deck, a level 1 brainstormer that's basically a copy of After the Battle Kirito but gives an additional plus 500 on using an act ability, and a level 0 base 2500 clean cut. None of these tools are terrible, but they're not terribly good either. Unfortunately, while it has a few gems in it and some cool cameo cards, green isn't too impressive. So let's hop right back into red. Psychoto no Ichizan has a pretty big showing as the only other red in the set. At level 0, it has a Salvage Brainstormer that combos with Standby and a 2-2 Chizuru that gets boosted by its stage presence. It also features a Salvage Ricky and some other level 0s that help your case. At level 1, it has a good 1-1 Standby target with Encore and a level 1 Minami Nita combo. Level 2 features a standard anti-change backup and obviously the 2-2 that we can stand up with the Brainstormer. And at level 3, there's a Kurimu in the Trial deck that heals and burns 1 with a combo and in the regular set, there's a Vanilla Burn 1 Reverser. So honestly, if you wanted to build pure Psychota no Ichizan, it's quite possible. But many of these cards really shine in the 8 standby deck that combines Psychoto and DXD. Admittedly, you mostly combine them for the Brainstormer, the 1 1, and the Climax itself, but still, many players are looking at 8 standby as the emergent meta deck for English, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's move to Blue's second showing. Emo Emo has a smaller card pool, and I'll be honest, not much of it is notable. It has a grand total of 8 cards, two of which are in the trial deck and constitute a bad bond and power combo. The other 5 are some mediocre level 0s, a draw 2 pitch 2 top stock level 3, and a stock generating level 1 combo. To my knowledge, none of these cards are widely played, and I don't know nearly enough about the show to provide any commentary on that fact. So let's talk about the last section of Blue, Akashic Records of a Bastard Magic Instructor. Is that the actual name? I'm not even sure. The title has some decent zeros and a level 1 reverse search climax combo, so it's not the worst. But the meat and potatoes seems to be this early play in the form of this Rumia. She's a 4 or more early play, which is basically free, and when she comes in, you can heal a character in your clock to your memory, which is pretty damn good for your compression and survivability. She also has a tech ability where you can pay 1 and ditch 2 when she comes in to straight up double one of your other character's powers for the turn. It's a high cost, but with the power that this set can put out in general, you'll pretty much reverse anything in the game. With the right setup, you could even take down a Reinhardt from ReZero. So this card, for all of its tech, is a very popular splash. There's also a climax combo restand level 3 that some people splash because it bounces a character on play, which we know is an extremely good ability in this summer's coming meta. This is another title that there are technically enough cards to build a deck, but it's mediocre at best. It's just another example that shines way more when you combine it with other elements of the set. Now there's one more small showing in yellow, and it's the ambition of Oda Nobuna. Again, it's a show I pretty much know jack shit about, and the card pool isn't too notable. There is a back row that you can quack yourself when you play a climax to top check 4, instead of the traditional pay 1 stock for this ability. It's a very popular splash to put yellow in your clock for the 3-4 event from Zombie. There's also a level 0 that you can pay 3 on play to stock swap your opponent from the top of their deck. Other than that, again, nothing terribly notable. And that wraps it up for the larger card pools, if you could even call them that in Fantasia Bunko. Now the set still features cameos from other shows as one or two ofs. Notably, there's a 2-1 2 soul Mamako that only has 500 power but gives your opponent's field minus 1500 on play, and an Oka that bombs for 3k and top checks for a level 0 to add to stage when she attacks. And finally, there's a Yuno from Maburaho breaking the color wheel in yellow that appears in the trial deck as a drop searcher. And that about wraps it up. There are probably one or two cards I may have missed that are worth noting. Let me know in the comments. But now let's transition to what we actually do with this set. As we've seen, a ton of these titles aren't really made to operate on their own. The card pool just isn't there. You can make singular decks with some of them just to say you did, but they won't be nearly as strong as when they're used together, and that's really what you're supposed to do with Fantasia Bunko, at least how I understand it. So the prudent thing to do is talk about some strong combinations and splashes. 
First up, I want to talk about Red, Yellow, and Blue, a combination of DXD, Saikoto, and Koi Wazambi Desuka with a little splash of blue for Bastard Magic Instructor in Day Day Live, is coming out to be the dominant deck for the people are testing. If you take 8 standby and combine it with DXD's Asias and Saikoto's mid-game standby targets, splashing yellow for the climax top checker from Nobuna, the negative soul event, plus the super big 2-2 from Zombie, and then throw in the free runner from Day Day Live and the early play memory healer from Magical Bastard, you come out with a deck that generates a ton of free advantage. Pretty much nothing will ever cost you stock, and you get tons of free cards and insanely high board power. It reminds me of a lot of SAO standby for the early and mid game, and instead of a blowout level 3 combo, it just keeps generating unwinnable board states and handing out negative soul. It's a very strong possibility. Now another strong possible combination is just adding your two main blue picks together. Day Day Live has a very strong finishing lineup, as well as a pretty decent level 0 suite. If you combine that with the mid game tech from Magical Bastard, the deck could be pretty decent. Of course, I'd still likely splash yellow for the level 0 tech, and possibly an event from Zombie or two. I can also see yellow with a blue splash being very strong. Combining good elements of the zero game from Nobuna with the already good parts of Zombie, while tying in some good zeros and tech threes in blue from Day Day Live and Magical Bastard, could give you a nice blend of consistency and finishing power. Sadly, green is the very obvious outlier here. It just doesn't have that amazing of a support lineup. Though a deck made to capitalize on the few gems it has like the early play from Amagami and the top checking level 3 as well as the anti-damage 10k level 2 from Full Metal Panic could be viable. When it comes down to it, I think the set gives you a ton of possibilities on what you want to do with the mishmash of tools it offers, but there are some pretty clear winners in the upcoming meta. The set offers a lot of enticing titles and awesome SPs as an incentive to get into it. I do like some titles in the set, and I'm tempted to single out a deck for myself. We'll see how things pan out. Anyway, that about wraps up Fejimi Fantasia Bunko. I hope this video shed some light on an interesting set coming out to English that's unlike anything we've seen thus far. And of course, stay tuned for more Weiss content in the future. And as always... Thanks for watching. Peace.